Hi, I'm Simon Jones from HitFilm.com, and in this here tutorial, I'm going to be covering two methods for adding gunfire to your shots. This is Portal Combat, Ryan Connolly's short film, and what you're seeing here is a version of the film before visual effects were added. And as you can see, during the shoot, none of the guns actually had any muzzle flashes. It was all added on in post. I'm going to grab a shot of one of the bad dudes firing a machine gun to show you exactly how to bring it to life. So there's two approaches to doing this in hit film. Let's take a look at the more traditional approach first, which is to use stock footage. If you're new to filmmaking, stock footage is something you want to start collecting right now. Having a library of stock assets that you can dig out at any time is super useful. I'm using muzzle flashes which were filmed from real weapons. Make sure you download the project files that we're giving out this tutorial because I've included some of the clips from the hit film library to start off your collection. There's an info card on this video which links right to them, or you can find them on the hit film website or in the YouTube description. Okay, once you've downloaded the files, open up the tutorial project. You'll find a whole bunch of stuff in the media panel ready to go. Find the item called tutorial shot and double click it to open it up. This is a composite shot, which is where you create visual effects inside HitFilm. You can have as many composite shots as you want in any given project. I've set up a few things already for you. So you can see that we have the video clip in here already, and we've got two point layers, one called barrel track and one called camera track. If you select the barrel track point, you'll see it pop up in the viewer. And if you now play through the video, you'll see that the tracked point stays stuck right on the front of the gun. We can use this to easily position our muzzle flashes. Now I'm not going to cover how to do tracking in this video. If you want to know exactly how tracking works, check out our portal tutorial, which goes into more detail. The same general techniques apply here, or in fact to anything else you're tracking. In the muzzle flash stock folder, you'll find a couple of clips. And if I click on one of them to load it up into the trimmer, you can see that it's really just a quick flash of fire, just a handful of frames. I'm going to move to near the start of our visual effects shot, and then drag that first muzzle flash down onto the timeline. The crosshairs show you where the clip is going to end up, and I'm going to position it right where the playhead is, because that's where I want the gun to be firing. Okay, so we now have this giganto muzzle flash, which is kind of a muddy orange. Before we go any further, head up to the Workspaces menu, which is this icon on Windows, or you'll find it in the View menu on Mac and make sure you've switched to the compositing setup. This will lay out the interface so that it's nice and convenient for doing VFX. You can change the interface layout at any point, and I encourage you to switch between different layouts depending on what exactly you're doing in HitFilm at that particular point in time. First up, let's get that muzzle flash into position. I'm going to use the tracked point I mentioned earlier. Point layers don't really do anything, and they're not visible in the shot, but they're perfect for controlling the position of other layers. So I'm going to use the parent menu here to link the muzzle flash to the tracked point. And initially, nothing changes. So with the muzzle flash selected, head over to the controls panel and open up the transform group using the little white triangle icon. If you look at the position values here, you can see that they've got some crazy numbers in there. And this means that they're offset from that tracked point by that amount. This can be really useful in a lot of cases, but for now we actually want the layer to be locked right on top of that tracked point. So let's just right click on the position property and choose reset. This will set it to zero. Next, click and drag on one of the scale values. It doesn't really matter which one, but dragging left will reduce the scale, thus making the muzzle flash smaller. You can see that HitFilm is scaling the layer from the middle, and that the layer is currently centered over the barrel of the gun. So what we actually want is for the muzzle flash to be positioned slightly off to the side, as if it's coming out of the barrel. And the best way to do this is to adjust the anchor point. This tells HitFilm where the main layer control should be. At 0, 0, it's right in the center of the layer. But if I increase the X, or horizontal, value, it shifts the layer to the left. The cool thing is that the scale works around this anchor point as well. So if I continue to tweak the scale now, you can see that it's changing size without moving away from the barrel. So essentially think of the anchor point as what links that layer to the frame of your video. So the size and look of a muzzle flash depends not just on the type of gun that's being used, but also the type of film you're making, because different styles of filmmaking have very different looks for their guns. But the main thing, doesn't matter what kind of film you're making, it is very easy to overdo it. And often going for a subtler look can be best. 
In this case I'm going to go for about 30%, which works pretty well for this shot. We now have a cool muzzle flash, tracked onto the barrel and positioned correctly, but it still doesn't really look very good. Every layer in hit film has something called a blend mode. This determines how the layer is mixed with the layers below it. Currently the muzzle flash is set to normal, which means it's simply sitting on top of everything below it. If you open up the layers menu and go to blend, you'll find a big old list of options, and each of these will produce a slightly different result. For the purposes of this tutorial, and for using fire-based stock in general, you want to check out the add and the screen blend modes. These cause a general brightening of the area where the layer mixes with everything below it, because the layer's pixels are added on to the pixels from the background. Screen produces a subtler result, while add can very easily cause a blown out, overexposed look. So this time around we're going to switch the layer to add. Overexposure when it comes to something like a muzzle flash isn't necessarily a bad thing, because a big bright muzzle explosion is quite likely to blow out your camera. Uh, but what we currently have going on here is a little bit too much. The easiest way to counter this is to adjust the opacity of the entire layer. So in the transform controls, we're going to lower down the opacity to make the layer more transparent. You don't want to go too far, about 55% works for me. Now the side effect of using the add or the screen blends is that the layer ends up looking semi-transparent. This is just part of how they work. And sometimes this is completely fine, but really we want our muzzle flashes to have a bit more density, a bit more physicality. We're going to choose duplicate from the muzzle flashes layer menu. This creates a copy of the layer. And now we're going to change the copy's blend mode back to normal and make sure it's the lower layer on the timeline. Okay, we'll use the opacity trick again to adjust the visibility of the duplicate. We want to take this down a bit lower still, to about 25%. You can see that what this is doing is bringing back some solid detail to the muzzle flash, while still retaining the generally intense add blended look. As you might have already figured out, a lot of this stuff is optional. You could just go with the basic add blended single layer, and for a lot of shots it would probably work. But as you layer in this kind of detail, the shot's going to start to look better and better. Now your general audience won't necessarily know exactly what you've done, but it will just feel right as they watch it. Quite often the best visual effects are ones that you don't even realise are there. Right, now let's add some smoke. Over in the media panel you'll find a smoke puff clip. Drag that down onto the timeline. The stock clip still has a black background. You'll find with stock that some of it will have been prepped for you already with built-in transparency, and some of it will be like this with a black background still. Either way, it's very easy to sort out. When you have a bit of stock footage with a black background like this, it's actually incredibly easy to deal with. All you need to use is an effect called Demult. That's D-E-M-U-L-T. And if you go up to the effects panel and just type that in, all you need to do is drag it from there onto the stock clip and it does everything for you. You're basically done and good to go. The smoke needs to be tracked into the shot, just like the muzzle flash. But the thing is we can't link it to the barrel track because it just looks weird. Smoke shouldn't remain stuck on the front of the gun after it's been fired. So that's why there's this second track layer called camera track. What I've done here is tracked the movement of the background, and this can be used in turn to link the smoke up to the camera movement. This makes it look like the smoke is in the scene and reacting to that camera. Like before, in the parent list, simply set the smoke's parent to the camera track layer and then use the smoke's transform controls to scale and position it to just in front of the gun barrel. This particular stock clip was shot with the smoke going up through the frame, and obviously we want it to come out to the side. This is really simple, all you have to do is rotate the clip. You can do this in the controls panel or in the viewer by dragging the little square tab. Now this particular stock clip has a slightly reddish tint, which we don't really want. We want it to just be standard grey smoke. To deal with that, it's also extremely simple. Up in the effects panel, we're going to look for a hue, saturation, and lightness effect. Drag that onto the smoke clip, and then in the controls panel, just drop saturation all the way down. I'm also going to go and get the blur effect from the effects library and drop it onto the smoke, making it a bit less distinct and softening its edges. Up in the controls panel, I'll untick the clamp to edge option for the blur effect. This just lets it blur all the way out beyond the edge of the layer which is what we want in this case. Finally, I'm going to have the smoke fade out pretty quickly. So quite often stock clips won't be the actual length you want them to be, so you can fine tune them once you're using them on the timeline. 
The simplest way to do this is to keyframe the opacity. So keyframes are used to create animation. By turning keyframes on, each time you change a setting, it's marked down on the timeline. That way, if you have 100% opacity on, say, frame 10, and then you skip forward to frame 20 and change the opacity to 0%, that layer will then fade out between those two keyframes. With keyframes turned off, changing a setting changes it for the entire duration of the layer. If you want to add keyframes, you can click the little grey circle to the left of any setting. I'm going to find the frame where I want the smoke to start disappearing, and turn on keyframing for the smoke layer's opacity. I'll now move forward about 5 frames and then drop the opacity down to 0%. HitFilm now automatically animates between those two keyframes, resulting in a gradual fading out. The big thing missing now is some kind of illumination. The key to a lot of successful computer effects is having them interact somehow with the environment. In this case it's about having the flash of the gun illuminate its surroundings as if it was really there. We're going to do this in two parts. First up, we'll create an intense flash right over the barrel. There are a million different ways to do this. I'm going to show you just one. So check out the new layer menu on the timeline. This is used to generate layers directly inside HitFilm. What we want is a new plane layer. Just stick with the default settings and you'll end up with a black rectangle at the same size as your frame. This black plane can now be used as a host for any other effect. So up in the effects panel we're going to search for the radial gradient effect and then drop it down onto the plane. Let's customize this thing up in the controls panel. We're going to put the smooth slider all the way up. That's a tip for life, not just hit film. The default radial gradient goes from white to blue. So let's change that to yellow and orange so that it matches our muzzle flash. You can set a color manually or you can drag the little color picker icon to choose a color directly from somewhere on your screen. For example, from the muzzle flash that we've already created in our video. In the center group, you'll find the position property. You can also choose a layer. So we're going to pick the barrel track. The inner radius I'm going to drop down to zero so that there isn't a big solid core. And then the outer radius I'll drop down as well until I get something that covers the immediate area around the barrel. I'll switch the blend mode of the plane layer itself to screen. And now we've got a cool glow. Currently though, it's a permanent glow. It goes throughout the entire shot. Useful if you're doing a flashlight, but not so much for this. I'll use keyframes again to drop the opacity down to zero over the course of three frames. This makes for a sudden, quick flash that fades away fast. Because the flash is really quick, there's no need to have the layer last the entire duration of the shot. So using the razor icon on the left of the timeline, I can click to slice the layer. After switching back to the select tool, I can now just select the unwanted part and simply delete it. This is an optional step, but it helps to keep your timeline tidy, and it also makes sure that HitFilm's not wasting any time rendering things that you can't really see. Okay, it's time for the last step. We're nearly done here. This step makes a huge difference to the realism of the shot. We're going to add some pretend lighting to Tim here, as if the gunfire is actually lighting him up. Now if you can do this on set with practical lighting, it can look super cool, but that's not always an option. It's maybe not practical or you might just not have the equipment to do it. So this is what you can do instead. I'm going to introduce you to two massively important hit film features, grade layers and masks. So open up the new layer menu again, and this time choose the grade layer option. At first, grade layers don't do anything, but they have a unique power to affect every single layer underneath. We actually only want to affect our video layer, so I'm going to move the grade layer down to just above the source video. And now for the other important thing, masking. Masks are hand-drawn shapes which can be used to define specific areas of the frame. When combined with grade layers, they're very useful for selectively grading specific objects in a shot. These tools up in the viewer are for drawing different mask shapes. There's the rectangle and ellipse shapes, but I'm going to go for the freehand tool so that I can draw something a little bit more detailed. I'll first make sure I've got the grade layer selected on the timeline, and then I'm just going to start clicking in the viewer to draw around Tim's arms, head, and chest. Finally, I'll click back onto the first point I put down, which will close and confirm my shape. So onto the grade layer, I'm now going to drop the gamma effect, and I'll boost all the settings up with an emphasis on the red and the green. This creates a bright, more orange tint to the masked area. It also washes it out a bit, resulting in it looking a bit low contrast, 
So I'll also find the brightness and contrast effect and add that on after the gamma. I can then use this to increase the contrast to 75, counteracting the contrast drop. Tim is moving through the shot, of course. This can be accommodated by going into the mask's transform controls and turning keyframing on for the path. With the select tool activated in the viewer, it's now very easy to drag the mask to a new location on each frame. Remember that you only need to do this for about three frames. While I'm in here, I'm gonna go into the shape property and ramp up the feather. The feather creates a softer edge to the mask shape because with a hard edge, you can see exactly where that mask is. But as you increase the feather, it becomes far less obvious that there's anything going on and the effect becomes quite subtle. Finally, we'll keyframe the opacity again to have the illumination fade out quickly over a couple of frames. And now you have a convincing muzzle flash. For shots where you have just a handful of muzzle flashes, this technique is particularly good and can be used to create very high fidelity, high detail results. By mixing in different stock clips, you can create different looks from the same general technique. And once you've got a few variants, you can always select and duplicate them on the timeline. And with just a few tweaks to the illumination mask and the smoke position, you'll move through the shots pretty fast. An alternative technique which can be particularly efficient with rapid firing automatic weapons is to use the gunfire effect from the destruction pack. Now this is a $24.99 add-on, so this is a completely optional extra bit at the end of this tutorial. But if you're heavily into your action films, I do recommend checking it out because it might save you a huge amount of time. The gunfire effect generates muzzle flashes inside of HitFilm, which means you don't need to use stock and you get an infinite variety of shapes and designs. It all works in 3D too, so you'll never find yourself with a tricky angle and no matching stock. You can customize the look to suit different weapon types, and perhaps most usefully, there's this rate of fire option. This is a massive time saver for automatic weapons, as you can set the rate of fire and then have the muzzle flash automatically turn on and off. Okay, so that's about it for this tutorial. Many thanks for watching this far, and make sure you have fun with your filmmaking. Keep trying new things. Remember that tutorials like this one should only be the starting point. It's up to you to continue experimenting and try out new stuff. Okay, many thanks for watching. My name's Simon Jones, and I'll see you over on the hitfilm.com forums, where there's loads of friendly filmmakers and artists ready to share techniques and help you out. Until next time.